399, 400. Oh yes, you know today we have to be real set. Physically, mentally, we have to challenge ourselves every day to be as best as we can and not get down with the toughness of the market conditions out there. I'm Terry Swanson, owner of Results Realty Services. This is the May edition of Talk to Terry. In this month's segment, we're going to talk about some quick view of national trends, look at the foreclosures that are coming across the country now, and then focus on the resetting of the North Atlanta market. I think you'll be interested. There's one thing I can tell you. Real estate helped lead us into this mess, and it's going to help lead us out. We're ready for it. So we're at the bottom. Everybody's trying to figure it out, but everybody will agree that we're close, if not already there. And there's some factors out there I want you to pay attention to across the country. It's number of sales and what's going on there. It's mortgages and where they are. And it's also supply of homes and prices. What are they doing? Now you can see by the number of sales in this map right here, you can see that the existing home sales decreased 3% in a month-to-month -month comparison. Pending sales rose 2.1% and new home construction sales shrunk just a little under 1%. A little mixed bag for those of you that want to take that into consideration. The number of sales you can see, remember last month we talked about that bottom could be a jagged edge, and as you can see here by the chart, it shows that March the sales did shrink just a little bit, but not as much as they were in January. So again, we're going back to that jagged edge, but March did not dip down as far as January was. So let's look for that to see if it's a trend that we continue on, and you might start to see a bottom forming in that jagged line. And then prices. Now here's an interesting thing. You notice the Case-Shiller Index. The last couple months, that has been at a decrease of 19%, and even though it's a small, small improvement, it's at 18.6%. So that's an improvement of the prices. Now here's what's going to happen. Mortgages are still at a phenomenal interest rate for a 30-year loan. They're somewhere in the high fours to low fives, bouncing around a little bit, but the government's doing everything they can to make sure that the buying opportunities still remain phenomenally well for those that can take advantage of the resetting of the market. And I think when you see the North Atlanta com combined with the resetting, you're going to see some phenomenal opportunities out there. So now let's talk about foreclosures and, and what's going on with foreclosures. What led us into a big, the big part of this mess was subprime loans and that's where you had people that you know, could fog a mirror and, and get a loan. That was three to four years ago. They really drove a lot of that together. Well, we've gone through most of that wave, and now what we're faced with is a lot of what they call Alt-A paper. Alt-A paper was a person that went and stated what they made income-wise and didn't give full documentation to prove everything that they said on their loan documentation. And that's starting to peak up in a lot of people's foreclosures numbers out there, as well as your prime paper. Prime paper would be somebody that had a good paying job, good payment history, was what they consider a prime A-plus person to make a loan. Well, now with the unemployment rates, a lot of those people are faced with they don't have a job and they have no income. So they got to take care of the day-to-day -day needs, feeding the family, taking the car, and the home payment's one of the first things that's going to go, and they'll figure out what they're going to do later on. That's what we're working through right now, and the government's going to do everything they can so they can help people buy homes out there and, and make it a little easier and stop that process from happening. So as we go forward, we're going to have to pay attention to Alt-A and A, A paper loans. Are they going in default? How are those numbers looking, and can they stop that from moving forward. Now, here's the good thing. Your median house price across the country has dropped down to $169,000 for your single family home. That's a phenomenal price. So if that keeps coming down, you're going to have more people be able to afford more homes. And that's going to be a key ingredient to helping everything start to get in the right direction. So we'll have to pay attention to foreclosures and what's going on. Only time will tell. So now let's really take an in-depth look and see what's going on in the North Atlanta market and look at the resetting of what's going on. I think you're going to find some of this very interesting. Now what we want to do, we want to define what exactly is going on in the marketplace for North Atlanta and pick some counties and, and take a look. So you can see the list of counties here. Now what we did is we went and we plugged in a four bedroom, two and a half bath house on a slab that had a two car garage. And we plugged that in with those variables to see in Gwinnett County, that home two years ago versus what it's selling for today, so this compared sold homes, what's the value of that home? As you can see, Gwinnett County has dropped 25% 
of sold value compared to what it was two years ago. Now that's pretty phenomenal. It's going to be some good opportunities for people that are buying in Gwinnett County. It has definitely reset. You can also see Dawson County, which has dropped 40%. But the problem there is the pace of sales has really dropped off and diminished significantly. And that's what Dawson County is struggling right, with right now. But it'll be one of the ones that probably first rebounds out of this as well. Forsyth County wasn't bad at all with just a 14% reduction. So there's some good mixture going on there. But what I'm going to talk about next is going to be Gwinnett County. And that's the county that I really want to focus on because it was the first one on the north side of town that was really cluttered with foreclosures. It still is for the most part, but it, the, the amazing thing there is the pace of sales. Every county around here has seen a reduction in the number of transactions with a year-to-year, month-to-month comparison. Gwinnett County is the first county that in March and April of this year, it met the same number of pending contracts written as was written in 2008. So that, you could say Gwinnett may have reset its prices. Now, it may have been a significant reduction and maybe not what you want to hear if you're selling, but you know what's good about Gwinnett? You could be looking at Gwinnett as being one of the first ones that's truly reached the bottom and can truly have the best chance of digging out. So we're going to watch Gwinnett because that's the first county we got some real even numbers coming across there on the number of sales. So good things are starting to happen out there. Pay attention to what's going on and don't miss out on the right opportunity for you. Okay, so wrapping this segment up, I want you to remember the government's doing everything they can to help stimulate the first time home buyers to really jump in the pool, engage in the buying process. You got foreclosures they can buy, but really what they'd like to see happen is for those first time home buyers go out there and start buying homes from people that are what we call your mid-tier move up people because they've all been wiped from the program out there. So if the government can get the first time home buyers to start the chain process in place and then you have your mid-tier people start to buy the homes 400,000 and up, all of a sudden you're going to have a lot of good things potentially start to happen. And really that price 400 and up has really been hit hard, but with your jumbo money coming down and making things more affordable and the government getting those first time home buyers really motivated to buy a deal today, you're going to start to see some good potential happening. The question's going to come down to unemployment, jobless rates, and what can they do to help stop the foreclosures? I got to tell you, we are doing calisthenics. We're doing our stretches. We are staying mentally prepared. We're focused and ready for the next possible wave that's coming through here. Fired up and ready. I hope you enjoyed this month and talk to Terry. Sincerely with passion. See you next month.